Hi there, welcome to the first in a whole host of new videos that are being produced by me, Mark Gray, for ADSR regarding Zebra. Uh, the first video which I'm about to do now is regarding the patches section of the Ze Zebra VST instrument, so let's just get straight into it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is just initialize the main patch, just so we're not got anything on the go. So we've just got the main basic patch up at the moment. Okay, I just want to go over each section really just explain to you what each bit, do, each bit does and give you some information to make it as crystal clear as possible. Okay, this left pane here, this is where you'll see the patch banks that you have on your machine. So this local here refers to the, your local machine and I shall show you where that normally is. So my files that you see here, so local there's the basics and you can see the first one in the basics bank is called HS Base Metal so if I go to my machine it's in Windows C Drive, Users, Public, Public Documents, UHE, Zebra 2 Data Presets and Zebra, if I go basics HS Base Metal. So when you create anything that's where it will go if you save it in the basics, leaders, fillers or whatever but I'll show you a little bit more detail about that in a second. So, this is a bank, and these are the patches within that bank. Pretty easy to understand. So we're in the basics, probably bass sounds. I click on bass, play the keyboard. As you can hear, it's a bass sound. Okay, more bass sounds. Very easy to understand. Now, if we were to create our own patch, so we've got an oscillator, let's just add a filter, and that'll do. I'll try and make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so say we created that patch and we wanted to save it. All we do is come up here and click save. Change the name, we'll call it Mark Test Patch 1. Author, I'll just put MG. You can put a description and usage where you want to play it, etc. Now, because we are in this local drive, we're in this local, which was this folder here. If I save that, that's where it's going to go. So if I click OK, save, we shall now see it in here, Mark Test Patch. And if we come back to that folder, there it is. Now I could now either do one of several things. In this folder I could just right click, create new folder, call it Marks Patches, drop that patch into there. Oh, I just dropped it into the MIDI programs, we'll just cut that out there. Put in the Marks Patches. So now if we come back to Zebra, we we'll see it's still there at the moment because we need to refresh. So if we just come over to local, right click, type hit refresh, you'll see that it's gone. And you'll see that there's now one called Marks Patches. If I click on that, there's my test patch. There's other ways and means we can do thing here. Selecting patches can be done by clicking on these and clicking here, but you can also click here and select the patch that way. Just remember that whenever you save a patch or you create a new folder in here, to see it, you need to right click and hit refresh. Now, as you probably noticed, we can create a new folder from here. We don't have to go to this folder, which would be really annoying if we had to do it all the time. So let's just come back here, delete that. Go back to Cubase. Now if we click on local, hit right click and create new folder, in fact cancel that, we want to click on local, right click and hit refresh first to get rid of that folder. Now left click, uh, right click, create new folder, marks test patches. Okay, you'll see it appear here. Now because I had that clicked on leaders, it's shown up under leaders. 
We don't want that, so we can... Can we drag it out? We should be able to drag it out. So we'll try again. So local, refresh, create new folder. Marks test patches, OK, and there it is. So now, whatever we do, so say I change this sound. Now we'll just go patches, local, initialize patch. So now we've got that, we can just select Mark's Test Patches, right click, uh, sorry, Mark's, make sure we've got Mark Test Patches selected, hit save, MTP for Mark's Test Patch, MG, you can put whatever you like in, hit OK, and now under Mark's Test Patches when you select it, you'll see the patch there, and if we go back, to the folder, go into Mark's test patches, and there you have it. So you can get as complicated with that as you want, really. But I would advise you to keep it as neat and tidy as possible. Now, there's also a few little things that I think are pretty strange. Now, say you've got loads of patches, and you want to mark some as favourites. You can right-click on, and select as favourite, and then you'll have a little star. So whenever you come, so say we had... That's one that we use all the time, and that's one that we use all the time. So whenever you're looking for Pacific sounds, you say, yeah, I know I've got some in there that I liked. Ah, there they are. You can see the favourites. Now, I think that's a good idea. Now, the next one, Mark Selecting is Junk. I'm not really sure if I agree. I, well, not so much that I agree with it, but I just don't see the point of it. If it's junk, then just delete it. Or just don't pay any attention to it. I'm just going to unmark these. Again, it's all right-click. Select the patch, right click, I want to unfavorite that, and I want to unfavorite that as well. And I want to unjunk that. Now what you can do also is if I come in here and junk that, mark selected as junk, mark selected as junk, right click, mark selected as junk, I can then come in here and right click and select hide junk, and it only shows you these uh, the patches that you don't consider to be junk. I guess that could be useful because it unclutters your patches, I guess, but I don't know. I don't know how much use you'll get out of it. I'm just going to show junk again and I'm just going to unjunk these. Right click, unjunk, right click, unjunk, right click, unjunk. You can also select and right click open an explorer. And it should open it up. I've never got that to work. I don't know why. It's the same on this side. If I right click, open an explorer, it never works. I just can't get it to work. I don't know why. But it should open up another window. Basically, it'll open up one of these windows, depending on where it is that you clicked, and it'll show you that. But it doesn't seem to work. Okay, you'll see these little section here. Now, this is the patch format. H2P is the proprietary uh, patch format for um, Yuhi or Zebra. As we come back to this folder, you'll see H2P. The beauty of this is any H2P formatted patch will open up in Mac, it will open up in PC, it will open up as a VST instrument, as an AU or an RTAS. So if you're working between different platforms, H2P is the way to go. You can save it as native format. So if we come back here, open that up, native, and hit save, and just put um, test native patch ok it's just saved it in a different format there you go the FXP format is I'm, I'm, I'm sure most of you are aware some of you might like that but the FXP format was the old interchangeable format that you could use between other machines in the past but you don't really need it if it's got this proprietary format and that's it H2P extended I'm not really sure on the difference between that and that. If I save that now, let's just see. A preset with that file name already exists. 
What do you want me to do? Okay, so let's see if there is actually... It's just... I don't see the difference. H2P, and I've never come across any difference or any benefit, and there's nothing in the manual that explains that, so I wouldn't worry about it. And this thing here is, say you've got... So say you've got all of these modules, and you've been, you've been creating a synth... <laughs> And when you've been building, you've you've turned a couple of modules off, but you haven't removed them. When you save this patch, as it says here, save only active modules. If that's on, when I save the patch now, as MTPE-1, okay. Now, when I open that, I go somewhere else, open that, and come back here, and open that. I don't know why it's, see it shouldn't do that, it shouldn't, when save only active modules is on, um, no inactive modules should be saved which creates smaller, it creates a smaller patch, it should be like that, I don't know why it's saved there, it's because they shouldn't be there, it's very strange, right tell you what, let's try that again, so they are inactive, these modules, Save only active modules on. Yeah, so that's what we want to do. Active. Okay. Turn it off. Save. Active off. Okay. So active. They're exactly the same, so I don't see what that's doing. I know what it should do, but it's not doing it. I'm unsure as to why. Because basically when you save it with that on, the patches, the patch size will be smaller because it doesn't save these ones that you forgot to get rid of. Anyway, that's the patch section. Hope you learned something from that. And I'll see you in a future video.